It's hit tax time here in Australia, and I thought it might be a good idea to talk about how to get the financial year from a date in Google Sheets. Now, there is a general standard way that you might have found on the internet, but it's fairly limited in scope and may not be useful for every country that has their financial year on different dates. So we're going to go through a couple of examples of how to implement the financial year formula in Google Sheets, and you can skip through to the one that you want to work with, but this will also be a progressive formula builder. So if you want to learn about uh, creating formulas and compound formulas in Google Sheets, you can start from the beginning and go all the way through to the end. As you can see here on our completed sheet, we have a sample bunch of data along the left hand side here. And I've highlighted the dates along the left hand side here as well as they change year to year. And then here we're going to look at these dates and then I've got some conditional formatting you don't have to worry about that's going to indicate the changes in the financial year when it's bolded and underlined. You can always check it out yourself in your own time. Now, if you want to play along, and I encourage that you do, there's a copy of the starter sheet in the link in the description below. And once you've got made a copy of that and you're ready to go, we'll dive in. Okay, you're back. Now, before we dive in, I just want to show you what the end product is going to look like for you. First, we have a, the standard approach that we'll go through. Then we'll talk about uh, financial years that don't start on the first of a particular month and how to handle for those. Then we're going to apply that special formula to a range instead of having to drag it down the columns. And then we're going to add an ending year and then perhaps just the two digits of that ending year. And then finally, we're going to add the entire financial year range here. Let's get into it. Okay, so your starter sheet should look a little bit like this, and we're going to make our standard formula here that you'll see on the internets. So what's that gonna look like? Okay, so first thing we need to do is decide on a month, and for us, our month is going to be the 1st of July, which is Australia's financial year, and apparently between the 1st of July and 1st of January, it's one of the most popular financial year starts in the world. Okay, so let's go back. What's our formula look like? So first we're going to have an if statement. So we're going to create an if statement that says if, and what is our logical expression going to be? Well, we want to look at the month. So we're going to say if month, and then we're going to select our range on the left-hand side here. So if month is this target value here, this A3, and we're going to say if it is less than the 7th, which is July, the 7th month, then we want to display the previous year starting as the financial year. So how do we do that? We are going to use the year formula, and then we're going to subtract one from that year. And then we're going to hit comma. If it is equal to the seventh or greater, we just want to display the current year. So then we'll say, yeah, again, then A3, close the brackets, then close our if statement bracket, we should be good to go. Cool. Now you'll see just above in the gray here that the formula will appear. We have this little formula text to display it for your convenience. Cool, so we've got 2017 as the first item. So we're going to need to drag this all the way down to the bottom of our range here. So I'm gonna do that for now. And let's have a look at the changes. So because we have July as our change, uh, we've got the second here and then the 10th so the 10th is after that period of time so it's going to display the 18th but this will display the 17th still that's just correct and then we've got the 8th here uh, so the 8th month which is august so that's okay it'll display the current year displayed on the cell but the 6th or june which is before july then it's going to display the previous year cool that works now, of course, this approach, uh, if we just drag down a little bit further down to here, for example, we're going to get this 1899, which is sort of an epoch date for uh, Google Sheets because there's no value there. We'll handle for that in a moment. Okay, so we've got that as standard approach sorted out. So how can we change this to include other dates? So let's have a look over in our fiscal year uh, Wikipedia page, and we can see that Ethiopia, Iran, and Nepal, and also, the United Kingdom have financial years that don't start on the first of a particular month. They start somewhere in the middle. So we need to handle for that as well. So let's open this one up to our financial years that don't start on the first of the month and adjust our formula. Cool. So again, we're going to use an if statement. So we'll say equals if. 
and our logical expression this time is just going to include the date so we're not going to look at the month we're going to look at the entire date so we're just going to select that and now we need to compare it against a date which is going to be the start of the financial year so if this current date is less than the financial year date of this particular year then we're going to use the previous year so how do we do that we can use the date function here so the date function as you can see, first it needs a year, so we're going to borrow this year that's over here first. So if the year is from this date, and then let's use the month and day from the United Kingdom, so the 6th of April here. So let's go back and we'll say our month is going to be April, which is 4. And then our month is going to be 6. And then we're going to close those brackets. And then we need to set our value if true. So if this is true, what are we going to do? We are going to set the year again. Year A3 minus 1. And if it's false, we're going to set the, just the year A3. Close those brackets. Close our if statement bracket. Hit enter. And there we go. Cool, so this should be a little bit different to this one because our, st our starting uh, financial year is going to be different. So let's see how it goes. We'll drag it all the way down to here and have a quick look and hide this one now and see. So the 2017 for this one is, is correct because it's before the uh, 6th of April. How about this one? Yes, it's after the 6th of April, definitely. What about this one? So we've got the 6th of April here. So it's on that date, so it would have changed. So that's correct because we wanted it to be less than. So that's fine. If we change that to the 5th, for example, then it would be the previous month. So that's correct. We've tested that successfully. We go down here. We can see here 4th, 28th to the 4th. So that's after that period of time. And then this 26th to the 3rd is before that financial year. So success. Cool. We worked out our formula. So this is okay to be uh, dragging it down, but what if we're updating this column more regularly and we want this dragged all the way down to the bottom? We want to handle for these blank bits here instead of displaying 1898, which could be confusing. And also we don't want to have to update these formulas as we go. We just want to update this single cell at the top. So let's handle for that now. So let's open up the next one. We'll just delay our access for this. This core formula that we have at the top here isn't going to change. Let's zoom in a bit for you as well. There you go, it looks a bit nicer. But first we're going to apply an array formula to it. The array formula allows you to iterate over a range uh, running this function each time it iterated, iterates over a cell. So let's do that. First we'll just go up here, we'll select this F3 Go into the formula bar and here and then not hit control a because we don't want the equals but we're going to get just on the right hand side of the equal sign here drag it across hit control c tab out and tab again to get across and now we'll say equals array formula that one there and let's just put things on a new line with control enter and we might just drag this down a bit so we can see a few more things awesome nice and we'll put in the if statement here just to make sure to get rid of these 1898 so we'll say if and what range are we going to select we're going to select this a3a so we'll say a3a is equal to blank then we don't want to do anything otherwise we want to do our formula remember we copied it earlier so it should still be in our copy memory so copy clipboard so we'll hit Control v to paste and that'll be in our else statement and close that brackets hit Control enter and close the array formula bracket and hit enter so now our formula is in place but we've only got this a3 at the moment so we need to include this a3a so we'll just quickly copy this Control h and change the uh, the values as well but this is just as easy we're tab now and now we've got our changes here and you can see that they've matching this previous formula here cool and also down the bottom now that we've got an empty space that is left blank 
further if we do have some empty spaces in our range as well. So if I delete this one out, for example, or you can see that we've also got an empty space here instead of something weird or janky. All right, control Z. Awesome. So what about if we want to show the start year and the end year? How do we need to change this formula now? Expand that one out. Let's close this one. And all we're going to do is let's just copy this across. This array formula across and hit control C, tab across, control V. Now I'm just going to put this on different lines just to make sure it's not as confusing for you. So we've got this if statement here. If, if there is a blank space, actually we'll do this as well. Control enter space, space, cool. And then if there is something in the cell, we do this. And then we've got our if condition here. So we control enter space, 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 space. And then if that condition is met, we want to do something. Space, 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 space. Otherwise, we want to do something else. Space, 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 space. Oh, back at space. Cool. Uh, let's close that for now. And we will control enter there. Space, space, space. Oh, that's looking a bit neater, isn't it, already? Let's expand that out so you can see everything. Cool. So we need to make changes to these two. This condition if it is uh, true or this false condition here. So we're going to add in a text and we want to separate it between the two years, which is going to be a forward slash. So what we'll do is put into ampersands. And then in between those ampersands, we are going to put in a double, two double quotation marks. And then in between those, we're going to put in a forward slash. And then we need to put the following year. So for this one, the year minus one. So we just need the year. So let's just copy this. Control C, Control V, rock and roll. And then we're going to do the same thing to this next one. So let's just grab all this information here and Control C, put in a space and Control V. And then we'll just add one to this year. Okay, and let's tab out. We've done something crazy cupcakes here. Ah, here we go. We added an extra bracket. That's what caused, caused that. Let's tab that out. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our range from 2018 to 2019. Maybe a little bit clearer. To be perfectly honest with you, I prefer this approach. You know what the year is. If, it's, if you're in the same country, you know the financial year implicitly, and this makes it easier to create charts and, and that sort of thing or sort by this value but if you want to see something more stylistic cool go for this maybe this is too much data and you just want to chop it down to 2017 forward slash 18 so how do we go about doing that let's have a look grab this formula again control c tab tab control v and just make sure it's all running cool and this time around in this last year value for both of these arguments, we need to put in a, another function called write. Let's see what write does. So write allows us to accept the string and then the number of characters to the right of that string. And for us, we just want the last two characters to the right of that string. So we're going to go comma two. Close that brackets. And let's do the same thing down here. We'll say write. And make sure we get over to this plus one as well. And we'll say comma two. Close the brackets, hit tab. There we go. So now we've got 2017 slash 18, 2019 slash 20, and so on. Awesome. Okay. Some of you might like it short. Some of you might like it long. Let's go the full on pedantic route and add in the the financial year dates. So it's going to be the starting date for So for it in our example in the UK, it's going to be the 6th of April with that current year, uh, going all the way through to the 5th of April the following year. Let's go ahead and make a copy of this formula again. So we'll just grow up to the top here and select all. So control C, tab across, and control V back into the formula bar here. Make sure it's all running cool bananas okay let's make our updates so this time around we need to display the entire year so on our first argument of year this year is okay 
but we need to convert it to a date. So first thing we need to do is say date. And then remember we have, we have date up here that accepts a year, month and day, do the same thing. So again, we'll go month, which is going to be four and date is going to be six. If we just left this the way it is, it's going to produce a number. So I'm just going to tab out just so you can see what the result is going to be for this. Now keep in mind, it's going to only occur on a truthy result. So it will only occur a few times. So let's just hit tab. And you can see an example of it here. So we've got this 42831, which is the numerical format of your dates in Google Sheets. And, but it's not very human readable. So we need to change that. So let's go back up to this date here. And what we can use to do that is the text function. So we're going to put that around this entire date here. So the first thing it's going to take is that date. And then it's going to take a string containing how you want that date format to be. So we're going to keep this same format, but of course you can use any format. And of course with these dates here, I've got it uh, 2000, I've got the year, month and day, but you could have it in a, a British format or an American format. It'll work just as we're going to have it here. But I'm a bit of a coder, so I like my year, I like my month and then I like my day. So for us, we can change this format here. So I'm going to say year, so three Y's for year, and that'll tell it's Y's, and then we're going to do dash and two capital M's for the month as a number, and then two D's. And let's just tab out of that and make sure that works first. And we'll see, yeah, we've got a full year here. Excellent. Let's apply this to the end of this first truthy condition and then the other conditions as well. All right, so we don't need write anymore, but we need this year condition. So let's just copy this text here, hit Control C. And then where it's from right all the way through to the end with a comma just before the comma here, we'll hit control V to paste. And then we're going to get rid of this minus one. And we're also going to subtract a day from this. Otherwise it will creep into the following year, right? So let's do that. And we need to repeat the process in the second range as well. So let's go ahead and copy this. Control C and replace this, Control V. I think it'll be more efficient. And then we're going to get rid of this minus one here. And I think everything else can stay the same. Let's hit tab. Okay, what have we got? So 2017 uh, through to 2017, that doesn't look right, does it? Ah, that's because in this value here, we needed to add a year. So let's go ahead and add a year. Hit tab. That's looking better. Okay, so 2017, April 06 through to 2018, April 5th. And uh, that's fine. We've got any ones where it changes for its before. So this will be a before item here. So that'll be the first statement. That's uh, 2017, 04, 18 of the 4th, 05. Perfect. There we go. So let's open all these up now that we're done. And now you've got yourself a little template for your own projects in future. So I hope this has given you a good and detailed insight into how to create financial year formulas in Google Sheets and giving you a couple of options too to help you expand and elaborate. I'm curious to see how you use this in your own projects, probably during tax time or setting up a budget, but it'd be great to see if you've got anything, any original approaches as well. One other approach I thought it might be good if you have seasonal work and you have a, a strange year, so perhaps a, a planting year or, or harvesting year or something like that for farm work or if you're working on seasonal tours or something like that, then uh, that might start at a different time or unusual time too. Let me know in the comments below what you're going to use it for. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe. Until next time.